I have cracked the code on how to successfully manage your side hustle while working your nine to five. Hey guys, my name is Sierra and welcome back to my channel. Here on my channel, we're all about creating a life you love. So that being said, we're going to hop into today's video. Have you ever felt yourself like overwhelmed with trying to manage your side hustle or are you in a space where you're like, I'm afraid to even start a side hustle because work is so hectic and I don't know how I can manage the two, but I do know I want to start a side hustle because I want to have, you know, additional income. I want to be able to create a legacy or create something for my family and my future. So with that being said, I have five tips that I'm going to give you guys today that is going to help you manage your side hustle while working your corporate job. Because at the end of the day, you got to work your corporate job to fund your dream. So don't think of it as like, oh, I need to quit. I need to quit. Leverage that time, leverage that money, leverage that pension, because my job gives a pension, leverage that um, college tuition, like leverage all of the things that you can get from an employer and just make sure that you're dedicating time to your side hustle as well. So that being said, let's hop into the first tip. So speaking of time, you have to be able to prioritize your time. And I know that's like a given, honestly, but when I say prioritize your time, you have to put it down in the books somewhere. So for me, I personally like to write things down in a planner or a calendar or have some sort of like notebook where I can check things off. Some people are good with like Notion or like Trello so where they can kind of just track their stuff there and use like digital stuff but I kind of feel like I need to have stuff visible and tangible for me to cross it off so I know it's there I know it exists because sometimes when things are digital it's kind of like out of sight out of mind unless it's like a reminder coming to my phone I'm gonna write it down and an example that I have for you guys with this one is like I personally do social media management on the side as well as some branding and marketing works so I have to schedule certain time and certain days for certain tasks when it comes to my business so say I have a day for content creation I have a day for scheduling posts I have to make sure I have time in my schedule every day to interact with my clients followers because that's something that you should be doing every day if you're a social media manager you have to make sure you have time to sit down and really analyze the metrics and figure out what you need to change what you need to pivot and things like that and make sure that you have time on your schedule to have touch points with your clients weekly monthly whatever kind of works for you and your business tip number two is going to be to set clear goals and this could be like long-term goals or even short-term goals and when it comes to goals i kind of feel like sometimes we make these grand goals like we make finish line goals but like not really sure where to start and how to get started but when it comes to making goals it's best to break them down into small manageable tasks so for example, I have a client who wants to build their social media following by 10% in the next three months. We have to make sure that they have a content plan, they have their content calendar, posts are scheduled and ready to go. We have to make sure that we are checking analytics. Um, if we want to run ads, we have to kind of look into that. What they have to do is they have to make sure that they're attracting new people and retaining the people that they have. So that is done by really just like fostering and nurturing your audience. And when you break these tasks down into these small manageable tasks, it kind of keeps you on track. And like I said, how I like to check things off, you know, all right, got that done. I can move on to the next thing. So it kind of just keeps you focused and on track too. Let's go to number three. So number three is going to be identify your most productive times. And I know we talked about managing your times in tip one, but identifying your most productive time is way more important because honestly, if you know that you work best at a certain time of the day, that's when you should be doing the majority of your big tasks during that time or the things that are gonna be like a heavy load, do that at your most productive hour. So say for example, I am a morning person. So if I need to get things done, I'm gonna do it in the morning. And I have a cake business that I was running. I still do cakes time to time, but when it came to managing my cake business, I was still working my nine to five. However, I still had to be on calls all day. I was working in recruiting. I had to make sure I was scheduling interviews. It was just like a very like robust, busy kind of job that I had. So I had to make sure that I used my time officially and I'm good in the morning. So I would wake up literally probably like three or four in the morning. If I needed to bake a cake, I would bake the cake. I would take the cake off the oven, wrap it up so it can cool, put it in the freezer, go to the gym, come back home. It's still morning time, make the buttercream and do things like that. So I'm making sure I'm leveraging that morning time because honestly, at the end of the night, I don't feel like doing a cake. At the end of the night, I don't feel like doing a logo. And it's just like my brain and my creativity 
is pretty much shot after work. So I feel like my most productive time is any time before 2 o'clock. After 2 o'clock, I'm no good. Even though it's 3 o'clock right now. <laughs> but anywho, um, you have to make sure you're leveraging your time to where you're the most productive. And then my fourth tip would be to leverage outsourcing or automation if you have to. Say you are a person who is super busy and you're on your feet and it's like you literally have no downtime to where you can dedicate to your side hustle throughout the day. So say for example, I have to be in the office three days a week. So those three days that I'm in the office, I really can't get anything done for my side hustle unless I do it in the morning, lunch, or after work. So if you're a person whose schedule is kind of busy, you might have to leverage outsourcing. And when I say outsourcing, sometimes we have to get on websites like Fiverr or Upwork and with me being a social media management or graphic design, sometimes you can outsource the graphic design, you can outsource the marketing and just kind of make your life easier. But obviously that comes with a cost. So I honestly wouldn't necessarily do this unless you have a whole bunch of clients or you have high ticket clients. And when it comes to social media management, those are usually high ticket clients. So you should be able to work that into your prices for your packages. And then also when it comes to automation, I previously said I'm scheduling your post. That's going to make your life easier. So that is a form of automation. But another form of automation is say that you have, say that you want to start a business or you have a business, but you're looking, you're looking to make this this business less work for you and more efficient for you as well and a source of like passive income. This can be done by doing digital downloads. People are making so much money from digital downloads. And when I say so much money, like, and it only takes you one time. You make the digital download one time and then you post it on your website or you post it on Etsy. Obviously, if you post it on your own website, you're gonna have to do like a little bit more marketing and stuff to get it out there so people know it exists. But say you don't wanna do that, you can throw that shit on Etsy. Just make sure it's optimized to where people can actually find it. But that is gonna make your life so much easier because it's like a one and done. Like you did it and then now, like when you get an order, ding, ding, ding. You don't really have to worry about that at all. Another option that people can do if they are looking to start a side hustle and don't even really have that much like money that they can put up initially, print on demand. And I wanna say print on demand has come a long way because back in the day, the quality of print and demand wasn't as good as it is now. And when I say print on demand, like you can have a apparel shop, a stationary shop, anything to where you are creating a designs, but you have a manufacturer who is going to make and distribute those designs to your customers. Like that's literally like a win-win and it's, it's little to no startup cost, depending on what you use. Like say if you have a Wix website or a Shopify website, you're gonna probably pay like $30 a month to host on there. And then um, say if you wanna use Etsy, you can also do print on demand on Etsy as well, but that is just some ideas I'm throwing out there. If you guys want to know a little bit more about digital downloads or print on demand and how to get started, please let me know below in the comments and I'll be happy to do an additional video for you for that. And last but not least, you have to take care of yourself. It is so easy to get burnt out, especially like if you're super excited about an idea, like you're super excited about your business, then it's like, oh my God, all I do is work and work. It's like I work in the morning and then I have to work on my dream at night and it's like, you have to make sure you're still having that work-life balance. So that could be done by, you know, scheduling breaks. Sometimes if I'm doing like a logo or a website, I can start and the sun is up and finish when the sun is down. And you're like, dang, where has time gone? So make sure you're scheduling like appropriate breaks and times within your day to kind of break up the stuff that you have to do so you're still living, like eating going to the bathroom, drinking water. Like you have to schedule breaks to do that kind of stuff. And sometimes what I do is like, all right, I'm gonna set a timer for an hour. Whatever I can get done in this hour is what's getting done. And that's me setting a boundary within myself and my business. And even just to hit on boundaries, like say you are a mom or you are a family and you run some sort of business, you have to set boundaries to where you're still, make sure, still making sure that you're pouring life into your family. Um, and whatever else you need to contribute to in your life, honestly. So say you are a life coach or something like that, you're going to cut your phone calls off at eight o'clock because that's gonna be more respectful for your wife or your family, anything like that. That's making sure you have those boundaries. Like you just have a set time. I'm available to talk and text during these times with my customers and my clients. Like 
that is putting you in control. And honestly, like even if you get a text after that time, you don't have to respond until the morning. So you set the rules in your business and you have to make it efficient and work for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments or things you need answered, please let me know down below in the comments. Thank you. Bye.